Whew. All right, hello. Oh, how are you? That's good. Oh, fine. Fantastic. Okay, now we have to be really quick because I'm in the middle of an important tennis match, as you can see. I mean, the tennis racket is away. So, okay, let's do very, 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 very quickly. Um, so we're going to talk about stuff now and uh, I, I go to the tennis match and then I come back and we're going to do more stuff uh, at the whiteboard so stay tuned and be very happy <sighs> ta da da the revenge of sentences and stuff like that or what not that's all very, 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 very something like, what do you call it, a thing which is very scary. And then, there we go. Also very scary. Okay, no, anyway, yeah, so, uh, tennis match and whatnot. You know what they say when you're, when, you know, uh, the show production gets lower, then you can actually uh, get more audience with props. So that's what I'm doing and that's what you're going to enjoy for the next couple of minutes. Now, let's do something very, very cool here. Because uh, things are very cool and cool things are cool. So, my point with the tennis match is completely idiotic. But it's true that actually when we try try to talk when we try to you know we're faced with a question then uh, our first intention is to talk using our native language which is in your case is supposed to be something other than hungarian now the first major problem would be understanding hungarian and we are not here to learn that at this very moment that's a bit complicated but we are here to pretend that we understand all the questions on the whiteboard because I'm here to help you so we're going to try to simulate or emulate a certain type of situation when you're faced with a question and we are going to try to come up with answers now the funny thing is that first of all you know enough to uh, actually answer the questions. The, the big problem, I think, is uh, actually coming up with an answer. So that's completely unrelated to languages. It's usually, it's, it's all about you trying to think of something when you're faced with a question such as Mit csináltál tegnap? Now, this is a good question, I believe. Let's examine it. First of all, mit. We may have a counter that word. It means what. Now, the T is because of object mode. Usually, it would be me. So, here we go. Now, we learned something. Now, the second part, chinal. Now, we are very lucky because uh, this one is actually... It's in the dictionary like that. It means to do or to make something. Now, this attachment here is actually past tense. I know. I know what you thought. Because you might have learned some Hungarian words, you might have thought that this attachment may very well be tal, which means well, plate in English. And that's very confusing, because remember, in a couple of, um, well, if you're watching the videos right after each other, then a couple of minutes ago, we talked about compound words. So, in this case, chinal and tal would be one big compound word, but that's not actually not true. Hungarian is confusing that way. So, this one you have to remember that uh, with the with a verb that could be an attachment so what does it mean well it's certainly past tense and it's certainly because I'm here to help you I can tell that it's second person so you 
So what did you do? And do you remember this one? Tegnop means yesterday. So what can we possibly answer to that question? What did you do yesterday? Mit csináltál tegnap? So, let's come up with some answers. I mean, we all live different lives. We all did different things yesterday. For instance, as I remember, but that would be a problem, or might be a problem because my memory is very, very bad, but I can always make something up. But in this case, I did go shopping yesterday, so that would be my answer here. So let's try to come up with that answer. As I told you just a couple of minutes ago, we have plenty of time to think about it here, but you don't have so much time to think about it in real life. But of course, we can only pretend that you are ready to face the real horrors of life in Hungary, but right now Let's just stay with the pretense, because that is fun, that creates the illusion that we are, you know, going and advancing and learning Hungarian, which you might need, because with all the grammar and stuff we have talked about, you might have came up, or might have come up with the question that, what is it for? Why do we do that? Hopefully, if I did a good job with the previous videos, I'm going to reference them a lot. Not just with Tegnop, but when we are trying to come up with the answer that I went shopping yesterday. Alright, well, this is a pen, this is a whiteboard, so I think these two are destined to be together and write a sentence. Okay, so if it was English, we could start with I, because I did something yesterday, but the truth is, and that's a big problem with Hungarian, we can't start with that. We have to find the verb and conjugate it. So, what's the word when it comes to I went shopping yesterday? Well, shopping could be but I think it's more important to go there, show. So, um, I went. That's our thing. Now, well, that's, uh, that's a very, very complicated one, because if you try to conjugate it using the web page, you see, I'm referencing to previous episodes, uh, if you conjugate it with the web page, it comes up as, hopefully, it comes up as a irregular one, because the past tense with I it's actually mentem. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, what's the secondary verb here? What's the real action? So I, I went somewhere to do what? Uh, that would be shopping. Now what's the ing word conjugation in Hungarian? If you remember, it's supposed to be ni, n-i. So, I take the word vásárol, and I put ni at the end. And that should come up with, with, with the proper answer, mentem vásárolni. But there is a big problem with it. And although I'm going to leave it like this, because this is the sentence, this is the answer we are looking for, at least in my case, let's discuss the order. Well, so, as you might remember, if I talked about it already, then Hungarian uh, conjugates verbs, conjugates anything, so if you give me a banana, I can conjugate that one as well. And uh, because of this, we are dealing with expressions uh, that tell us a lot. In this case, mentem, that tells us who and what, what that person did. Vasharolni tells us that we are connecting it to another verb and um, that it, it, it's about shopping. So, 
And if you connect these two, remember in English you have two options. I went shopping, I went to shop. Now the latter one is not very good in this case, but we're not here to learn English and learn the difference between these two. Where the only thing you have to remember is that connect words with N, E, well, verbs, sorry. I have to specify that. Now, the big thing, the big surprise that most people don't know about the Hungarian language is that if we change the word order here, first, we can do that. Second, it makes a slightly different meaning. Third, that's crazy. And yes, well, true. But I love it, not just because I'm Hungarian and I already learnt it and I can use my evil laugh here. <laughs> yeah, it sucks for you. But when it comes to um, making an order, you have to understand that uh, you have to put that extra thought in there. So in English, it would be uh, you know, the thoughts could come quickly, like, I went shopping, oh wow, that's, that's crazy and that's really fast and I answered the question. But in Hungarian, first of all, let's think about it and second of all, let's think about it again and then let's come up with an order. Like, which is important, the shopping or that I went there? Well, from my perspective, as a Hungarian, it's very, very easy. From your perspective, as someone who wants to learn this crazy language, not easy at all. Because uh, for me, mentem is not very interesting. I mean, look, of course I went shopping. That's, that's kind of obvious. Why, you know, that's not very important where I went. Now that's more important, so that comes first. So imagine this, if you, uh, if you are English and uh, you speak Hungarian, it seems, it could seem to you that you are on the way to becoming Yoda itself, if you understand the Star Wars reference. You know Yoda was the person or character in the film who spoke really funny. For instance, he said, uh, shopping I went, or I, I can't do the Yoda voice, I, I can try, but I, I, I will fail, but just so we could relax, uh, give me a moment to try. <clears throat> shopping I went, or, nah, that's horrible, <laughs> well, anyway. So yeah, let's calm down, let's stop with the laughing. You're not laughing with me, you're laughing at me, therefore you're a bad person. So just stop it, and let's concentrate on the word order. Uh, so Yoda, as a character, put things, put the important things first, maybe, maybe because he was a Hungarian, and, uh, and then he said the uh, boring ones later. Now, the reason why we are um, going with this at this very moment, just two words, because it's easy to understand. But the think about it, this philosophy applies to every single Hungarian sentence. So when you're talking Hungarian, when I talk or about something in Hungarian, this goes through my mind. Often I have to repeat stuff, because uh, I screwed the order up and now I have to make it clear for the audience. or. Well, that one person I, that usually listens to me. Maybe, yeah, if someone is willing to listen to me. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's the thing. Okay, now look, uh, this is not enough. This is clearly not enough. I mean, look at it, what kind of answer is that? Who would answer like that? Just, I oh, went shopping, that's so boring, who cares? Ah, oh, come on. Uh, so let's do something else, let's... let's create a story. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm meant and Vashan only, there we go. What's next? Let's say something with the verb uh, venni or ves, because that's, uh, that's another irregular one. It goes... Um, vettem, it means uh, I bought something. Uh, let's see, vettem harom, three, par, that's pair, zokni, 
that socks. Of course, this is one sock, and uh, we Hungarians don't really use plural and stuff like English, so this three pair of socks would be just sock, because we think that it's obvious that socks come in pair. But there is a mistake in this sentence. I mean, think about it. Vettem, that's pretty cool. The harum par zokni, but which which is the object again? So what did I buy? What did I buy? Well, definitely socks. Well, three pairs of socks. So this would be the uh, object itself, meaning it needs a T. But you already know that. Don't you? I mean, you know everything, so let's move on. Let's take another one. Uh, for instance, let's, do, uh, let's say something about the socks. Um, let's say two red and two white. You might know that pirosh is red. And then you might know that ish means and. And... Uh, um, what was the color? White, so that would be fahir, which is not white, which I'm trying to write down here. Uh, okay, well, obviously this is also a mistake. Well, at least this one and that one. I mean, we are referring to the previous socks, and although my math is very, 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 very bad, uh, let's let's modify this one to make it equal three actually. So these are in object mode because in English that wouldn't be obvious, I think. Uh, but if you put something in an object into object mode because that is an object, you have to treat it as objects as well, even if they are refer even if you are referring to them as colors. Oh yeah, that's crazy about Hungarian. But you can't use T just there, the T. What, what kind of pronunciation of that a Hungarian would ask? Like, Pirosht. Oh, seriously. So you have to use a connecting vowel, Pirosht. And it's O because uh, we can't repeat the O. That would be silly. Oh, well, obviously. And of course, this is a mixed vowel verb, and O is kind of dominant, so um, yeah, we have only that option. And this one, well, this is clearly need uh, a, a back vowel, a front vowel word, sorry. So all, all high pitch letters. So the connecting vowel would be the usual E. Fehirat. All right, now you uh, might have only, que only one question, like why is this not in plural? Well, obviously because we told, we counted it, and once you count something, it can't be in plural in Hungarian. There is no need for that. Oh, yes. All right, well, that was a complete story. Obviously, there are no mistakes in there anymore, hopefully. And um, we talked about what we did in details. Well, what I did in details. Uh, actually, I didn't buy socks, so well, that's, that's just details, all in the details. Look, uh, I know it seems uh, very, very hard to make a sentence. I mean... Um, often it seems, especially when I teach, that I just come up with rules and rules, you know, more and more rules. Because uh, now I use two words, two verbs, mentem, vettem, both irregular. I mean, ah, that's so, so complicated. You can always run into something like that. And then we still have two other conversations to make, and that is crazy, I tell you. Very, very crazy. Now, the big problem is that uh, you have to start somewhere, obviously. So you can't just go around and, you know, try to speak and, and succeed. You obviously have to, you know, wait for 
it to make sense to you. So that's why we're doing the stories. Hopefully they help you because we put whatever we learned before into, you know, action. Finally, like this is a past tense story. story. This is also, but that one could be present. Who knows? It's a mystery. So yeah, this is pretty complicated or not. Who knows? Alright, well, that's enough relaxation for you. Let's move on to the next story and be very efficient, you know, with time and everything. Alright, well, it definitely starts with NAM, so that's a negative. LATOD. Alright, well, LAT is means uh, to see. So, didn't you see? Um, Kedvenc, supposed to be favorite. And tollam, that is a possessive. My, my pen. So, did you see my pen? Obviously using the definite article, because Hungarian is um, weird like that. Now, if you think about it, this is not my, the pen, because this is here and then it's here. So, if you try to find something in English as an equivalent, it would be the pen of mine. You know, just to help you. But anyway, let's answer that. Um, it's in negative because Hungarians actually tend to, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe we just uh, try to expect the worst and communicate it that. So in this case it would be, didn't you see it? The obvious answer, you didn't. But maybe you did. And that is the hard part. Because you can't answer this uh, with yes. Because it starts with NAM. No. In Hungarian you should answer it, if the answer is positive, with BUT. Meaning DE. So let's do that. DE. And let's go crazy. For instance, say that it is under the table. So THE table. That's cool. And then, of course, a lot, meaning under. And the necessary one, the word for existence, because we are expressing that it is under the table, which would be this word. Uh, but how about that? Let's go even more and more crazy, um, because it's not enough that it's under the table, it's next to the chair. Sake could be the chair. Well, it is, I tell you. Alright. And there. Where is the freaking one? By now, you might be very, very pissed off with me. Because sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. But the truth is that Hungarian doesn't like repeating words. So it is obvious that this, que this answer and this answer, they both have the same pattern. And Hungarian loves pattern, because we can say things like, oh yeah, there, there is an obvious pattern there, so you don't need to put the one there, that would be uh, repeating a word. So it's fine without this. It should be a sake mellet von, but no. So there, that is quite a different... Uh, approach to things, I believe, like in English. First of all, the negative question, and then but in the answer. And then, of course, if you remember, the placing word is after the actual place. And so on and so on. This is just crazy. Now, maybe, because I, usually a very un I am usually very unsure of myself, I usually ask about, I don't know, like the color or something to make sure that I, this is my, this is the good answer. It's really under the table. So let's uh, ask something that, uh, uh, is it the red one? 
Or are you talking about? And this is very cool. Are you talking about the red one? Now, this is crazy. I tell you why. First of all, we start with the red. Because um, obviously that is more important. And you remember that. This one is in the wrong order because Vasharolni is much more important than that. So I already learned from my mistake and put the most important one in the front. But how can we say that we are talking about something? Are you talking about the red one? Well, let's face it, one is non existent in Hungarian. Pirosh can be the actual noun in this case. We don't have to repeat that it's the red pen. But in, in both cases, doesn't matter if it's alone or if it's with the toll, one of them gets the attachment roll or roll. Because for some reason, we Hungarians, we don't have about as the preposition, or in this case it would be an attachment. But we have from. And we use that one, because that's fun. So in this case, a pirosh roll, and then the word for talk is basel. And conjugating it with an S, and putting a question mark there. Because asking questions is quite easy in Hungarian. So the whole thing would be a pirosh roll basels. So are you talking about the red one? <laughs> because, yeah, we Hungarians are weird. And then someone would might answer that uh, Igan, yes, I am talking about that one. And then you say, um, OK. And then you repeat some of the, the first thing or I repeat in this case. Okay, az asztal alatt. There. Yes, okay is spelled like that. That is Hungarian, and we use that. Even though it's supposed to be English or something, yeah, we say okay, az asztal alatt. Of course I could say az asztal alatt van, but I don't need it. We are, it's obvious we are talking about this sentence, I'm referencing that one. Now, this is, there is a reason why I have wrote all the three words there. And this is what we have to discuss now. Yeah, discussion time with the thing, which was three words. Oz ostal alat. Now, obviously oz cannot stand alone, that doesn't make any sense. Az asztal, that, that isn't saying much. And the alat cannot be alone. So we can't say under. You, will, you always have to say under something. Uh, so basically we are stuck with that expression. All three words treated as one. Even though we don't write them as one word. Uh, but that would, wouldn't be very um, interesting or unique. English is like that. In English you would answer, yeah, under the table. And there we go. So at least, finally, we have some similarities with English. Now let me read the whole conversation for you, you know, just for fun. So, Nem láttad a kedvenc tollam? De, az asztal alatt van. A szék mellett. A pirosról beszélsz? Igen. Oké, okay, az asztal alatt. Just to clarify that the previous statement is right. Now you could go on saying something like that, that, oh yes, then I stick to my previous statement. But who talks like that? Not even in English you do it. So, um, luckily, that is a big, big similarity between our languages. So we tend to talk like humans. Thank cows. All right. Now, we wrote two 
awesome stories. How about the third one? Just for the kick of it. Ooh, yes. This is some sort of interview question. Do you remember the role? It's here. So that's awesome. Um, like this. But in this case, Mogod referring to yourself. So this is about yourself. And then Meshel in the dictionary without the Ye. It is to tell a story, to talk. So Ye, what's Ye? Do you remember Ye? Hmm? Yes, no, yes. What if I told you that that's imperative? Im imperative? Yeah, imper I can't pronounce that one, so just go on with that. So there, there you go. Talk about yourself. It says talk. It's, it's a command, not even a question. It commands us to talk about ourselves. Now that's kind of easy. For instance, we can say that I am tall. Oh, no, a mistake. There, uh -huh. I am tall. Pretty easy. How about another one? Let's say that we are, or in this case, I, am, I've, I have got long hair. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, too, too few S's. Because that is long, with a long S. Oh, no. That is hard. Well, at least I think it is, but maybe not. So this is something, the word for existence. This is the possessive, my something. This one is like that one, tollam, my pen. In this case, hoi means hair. So hoyam, my hair. So my, my long hair is which doesn't make any sense. But it must make sense because I am Hungarian and, and I, I'm here, I made that sentence. So there must be good somehow, for some reason. Now the only question is, can I actually explain it? And that is something we stumbled upon here completely by accident, if you can believe me, that Hungarians and English people, or, you know, English-speaking people, will always be different in. English uses the have, to have word as possessive. I have a car, I have a headache, etc. When Hungarian solves this with the possessive, so you have the word for existence, the to be, conjugated into the proper thing, like in this case. Uh, it's, called, it's very close to there is... It's very, very close to uh, the there is, there are in English. Think about it as uh, this is the there is or this one, and then you can put the long hair there. I know this is not the best explanation, but think about it as there is my long hair here. Um, but it's very different and it's really hard to explain. And it's really hard to explain to Hungarians why have is so obvious to English people to, to possess something, to possess a headache, that makes no sense. To possess long hair, well, I grow it myself, obviously, but how can I possess it? I didn't buy it. With the car, it makes sense. I have a car, I possess it, I own it, but I don't own my long hair. But it makes sense in English. Hungarians, uh, in Hungarian, this makes sense. That my long hair is this. Maybe that would be a better explanation, but 
we both suffer when we learn each other's languages. I suffered, my students who try to learn English suffer, and of course my students who try to learn Hungarian suffer because of this. So yeah. Now obviously uh, we could practice it and stuff if this was a sort of seminar thingy like like a Google Hangout or, what, or whatnot, you know, like a class or something. But this is a presentation. So you have to, you know, just go with the flow. And I direct the flow. So, in this case, I say that that's enough. And let's move on. Later, in later videos, probably we'll find ourselves in the same situation and then we can write sentences like this more and more and more and you will get used to it that's the only thing you can this is not about learning a, uh, the grammar it's about learning the pattern if you own something even if it's a car this is how you say it and let's say that, just for fun. Now look, Hungarians don't have much money, in general. So that, that's, maybe that's why it's very, very important to put the van here to actually tell the existence of my car. And my car is secondary. So, you know, in English, you could think that, oh yeah, so it's like this, because vasharolni um, mentem, this, this is more important than just the, the go, the, the word for go itself. You might think that, oh yeah, but it's a word, it's to, this is to be, why is it important? Well, in this case it is, because this one is something that, that I own, and... And we have to express that very much. So in this case, this translates to I have got a car, even though there is no have got in it. Or I have a car, even though there is no have in it. But the word for existence. Lovely. And um, yeah, actually, just to tell you a funny story, or I don't know how funny it is, lots of people beginners, Hungarian beginners in English, say that I am a car because of this. Because they, uh, they try to think in Hungarian rather than thinking in English because they are beginners. I mean, you know, you can't expect a lot uh, at the first lesson already or something. Not everybody is a genius or even a genius who is a physicist might not be good in languages. Anyway, so yeah, this is the thing. This is how we say stuff. I hope I made myself clear in this. Now, let's, let's talk about ourselves. For instance, uh, let's say that uh, I like reading. Wow, I really, really suck at writing. Very good. Szeretek olvasni. This is obviously more important than what I actually like, because we Hungarians don't like a lot of things. So when I say I like reading, that's a big thing. I actually don't like reading, but yeah, that was the sentence. I try to use an example. Uh, okay, and how about, um, let's say every Monday, Minden hét fön. Ooh, yeah. Tenny says them. 
Now let's 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 find this out. What happening? What's happening there? Tennis is obviously the game, and in English it would say, "I every Monday I play tennis." But Hungarian uses only one little attachment. Tennis says, and then you have to conjugate it into the proper person. So in this case, I am doing it. Tennis says, "Am." Oh yeah. So the whole thing would be, I play tennis every Monday, minden hét fönn teniszezem. Woohoo! Alright! We can dance because we are happy, because there are no more sentences to make. But let me read it for you. Someone says, Mesei magadról. That's a very nice invitation. Let's see. Magas vagyok. Hosszú hajam van. Van egy autóm. Szeretek olvasni. Minden hétfőn teniszezem. All right. Yeah. Exactly. So, these are not exactly true for me, but um, at least they are sentences. So you don't actually get to know me more. Sad, I know. I am fascinating. <laughs> All right, well, look. Um, so now today we, uh, we have encountered a lot of problems, like a lot of things to sink in there must be. So I say that let's leave it that. Well, let's leave it at that. And um, I don't, I don't have, have any more explanation, any further explanations. These are sentences, and the only thing, well, two things we have learned today is um, that is not about grammar but sort of vocabulary is the uh, om, the possessive for myself, and the, um, the actual where is it, where is it. The role, or rule, it depends on, you know, high pitch, low pitch, high low. Uh, rule is high, so, for instance, uh, zokni would be zokni rule, um, but then um, tennis would be tennis rule, about tennis, the game. So these are the things we learned. And a bunch of grammary stuff, and people don't like grammary stuff because it's very much grammar-like. But look, um, we have to start somewhere. We have to, at some point, we have to start, um, you know, just going into the deep of the pool thingy. I don't really get that metaphor, but I guess it's, you know, really deep, so dangerous. Well, okay, so, yeah. So that's it for, for today, I believe. There wasn't a very, very long lesson, I guess, but I don't know, I haven't timed it, and I can't edit it while I'm recording it, so I can't say it, but I hope you had some fun, and I hope you didn't have a heart attack, in case you had a heart attack. I, 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 I hope that you have someone, you know, who you can call, or at least the ambulance. And uh, next time, you have to be prepared, I tell you now, because next time it's going to be harder. And every time now it's going to be really, really tense, and you're going to hate me. Oh, well, I don't want you to hate me, but sadly I can't do much. Okay, now, last thing, last thing of all. You can, if you have any questions or discuss things, you can do it in the comment section. I usually try to answer myself, but I have noticed that there are a bunch of people out there who studied a little Hungarian or Hungarian themselves who like to help out, and I'm really, really grateful for them. Thank you very much for any help. So, away with the discussion, because that is fun. Ultimately, 
if you are very shy or something, you can always uh, write me uh, an email, you know, that hung, um, you know, Hungarian project at gmail.com thingy. And then you, I will answer that. But, you know, I always answer letters, but, you know, you have no way of knowing if I'm going to answer, so you have to believe me. I hope you believe me. I mean, look at my face. It's very believable. Okay. All right. So, thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next video. Oh, tennis! <laughs> Sorry, just have to walk.